China poses to U.S. national security and the entire world. A new report shows the authoritarian regime's latest scheme to dominate the planet through enhancing its military, and it sounds like something straight out of a science fiction movie. Listen. It's called gene editing. It's altering DNA, and it's one of the things that our intelligence shows that China is doing. They've got a—the PRC, the People's Republic of China, has two million strong in its military, and it's trying to make them stronger through, uh, you know, gene editing. Gene editing, he says. That's genetic engineering, and it's designed to manufacture bigger, stronger soldiers to fight for the Chinese Communist Party. Director Ratcliffe went on to say that if China's mission to become a dominant superpower, that that's their main goal, or the dominant superpower. Our freedoms, our liberties are in grave jeopardy. If this ever happens, quite frankly, it is flat out scary. Joining us now to discuss China's growing military threat is retired Lieutenant Colonel from the United States Marine Corps, Oliver North. He recently published the book, America's Number One Adversary and What We Must Do About It Now, and it's available for sale. Colonel North, it's great to see you. Thanks for coming on. This is frightening stuff, isn't it, sir? Oh, yes, it is. There's no doubt about it. And the team that's coming in is not going to be very helpful at all. If you look at Jake Sullivan as the national security advisor, you look at the guy Blinken as the secretary of state, and behind it all, you've got the hand of John Kerry. This is not good, particularly guys like Sullivan, who supported the JITPOA, so-called $1.7 billion gift to the Ayatollahs, and oppose President Trump's withdrawal from the JICPOA, the so-called Iran deal. He's also the kind of guy that they love over there. They've told he went on a on a speaking tour in China back in 2017 and 18, and he told the PRC's global TV network that Trump might use military action against North Korea. Nothing was further from the president's mind, but you notice the president kept them from testing any more nuclear weapons or firing off any more ICBMs over Japan. So Everything that they've done in this, in this so-called incoming administration, if it actually happens, is very, very much supported by those in China who are looking at us as their number one opponent right now. It's a very appropriate topic to be talking about on the 79th anniversary of D-Day. This could well, this book right here, God, I'm just getting like Joe Biden. This book right here <laughs> by, the, by these three authors lays out the threat and 70 specific recommendations on how to deal with it. So Xi Jinping must be very happy that Joe Biden is preparing to move into the White House, whether he does it or not. His Politburo is going to continue to wield absolute power in the People's Republic of China. He's the general secretary of the Central Committee of the Communist Party of China. He's the commander in chief of their armed forces. And he's head, the head of the Commission on Integrated Military and Civilian Development. And all of that, Grant, is the kind of thing in such a combination of a civilian and military power and one man is daunting in an undemocratic state. All right, so Colonel, here's my biggest fear is you're gonna have the Chinese military, we're already seeing them getting stronger and stronger. Under Joe Biden, I'm very fearful the United States military will get weaker and weaker. And it's not just a military threat. We know China is going after US companies, doing everything they can to, to steal information and technology from the United States, replicate it over there. With all with an administration, if Joe Biden gets there, that isn't gonna do anything about it and is gonna leave this mess four years from now to a very powerful China. Well, the People's Rep Republic of China already has more naval combatants than the U.S. Navy, and they're building amphibious ships, which are not defensive, they're offensive, I know, because I was a Marine. The theft of intellectual property that you just raised threatens our national security. They've allowed tons of illicit drugs to be exported to other nations, endangering millions. They've set up a global string of pearls, as they call them, bases from Djibouti to the Panama Canal to Pakistan, trying to threaten India from the Indian Ocean. They've set up false territorial claims over open seas and erecting man-made military bastions. That's visual proof of Z's determination. But the most menacing part of all, and I noticed John did not mention that, the, the, sec the director of national intelligence, the very secret, overt, and covert acts to thwart the economic and military sanctions against the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps and the deals that they're cutting with the Ayatollahs almost ensures that the Ayatollahs are going to obtain a nuclear weapon and the means of delivery. And finally, there's credible evidence in this book, I'll get it up there the right way, in this book about how the Communist Party in China was instrumental in the worldwide spread of COVID-19. Religious freedom is non-existent. Democracy in Hong Kong has been crushed. Wow. 
and the economies of dozens of developing countries are threatened by the PRC's predatory Belt and Road Initiative. This is not an encouraging look at these folks in Beijing. No, it's not. Uh, Colonel, you know, it's good news. This show comes on at 8 o'clock, ends at 9. You have, have a chance to have yourself a cup of hot tea because I don't know how anybody sleeps after the information that you just laid out because it, it absolutely is frightening, frightening stuff. And we need a leader who is willing to stand up to China as President Trump was, and we're not going to get that with Joe Biden. Colonel North, as always, great to see you. Semper Fi, sir. Semper Fi, brother. Get that book up. So make sure you get it before the communist Chinese ban the darn thing. Thank Come you, on, friend. show it out. America's number one adversary. I'll hawk Colonel Norse books any day of the week. Happy to do it.